Hello everybody, it's SD Medhaven here, and I have a Know Your Tank. It is the General T-27. This is the Czechoslovakian tank that was released about three months ago, as of 11-9-2020. Uh, you know, 2020, such a great year. Lots of fun stuff is happening. <laughs> Colorona. Alrighty, well, the replay that we have, there's a lot of strategy involved inside this replay. And we're going to try and go over as much as we can. So, without further ado, here we go. Fisherman's Bay. Fisherman's Bay has been popping up a lot as of the most recent switch that they did for the map rotation. On console, they only do map rotations once every single two weeks, while on PC, it's almost once every single three days. I would like to see it weekly for console. That could make a huge difference for a lot of people. Alright, so right off the bat, we're taking a look at platoons. That's usually what I like to do right away. So I see they got a brick, T-34, VK-101P. That's a heavily armored platoon. Along with that, they have two equalizers in a platoon. And for the three platoon, they also have a T-28. So in that platoon, they've got a lot of firepower, a lot of armor. Going over the list, there's three artilleries per team. Now... When, when there's three artilleries, you know, normally I like to play a little aggressive inside my T-27, the general. So, I usually try and hit left on Fisherman's Bay just to get a couple of early spots in. But, you know, with three artilleries, you don't want to rush into a position that's going to make you hold. It, it can be a, a real big issue with three artilleries firing at you, especially two equalizers with a 20 second reload and a 155. So that, that's something you really, really got to think about at the start of a match. You know, what artilleries do they got? Equalizers, or even the Tier 8 Derp Burt. With its 8 second reload. And if it penetrates, it can do up to 700 damage. So, and in the general, you don't have a lot of armor on your top. And in the front, you have around 120 to 100 millimeters of armor on your turret. So you, you want to be a little careful whenever trying to pop out because the splash is going to really hold you down. Now, right here, we're, we're just knocking down a single tree just in case we have light tanks that just want to come down the middle. But I started to look at the map as I look over to my right. <laughs> Both light tanks are on the right side of the map. And once I realized that, I knew that no one was covering the center. So it's time for me to push up. Requesting covering me... You know, there's a three-man platoon in our team of artillery. Hopefully that they get the idea that I'm moving up to go spot. Light tank gets a spot before I do. A couple of bushes in the way. My crew, I don't exactly have the greatest crew on this tank. So far, I've only got four perks. and <laughs> Trying to help him out and getting him flipped. And <laughs> instead, all I did is get him a 24 damage. So, a little sorry. You know, watching someone flip a light tank, you know, at least he didn't do any damage to himself until I hit him. At least it didn't turn blue, that would have sucked. Well, Tiger 1. And off to our right, that's an STA 2. Now, lo looking at the map, we see the artillery in the back there. We don't see a lot of people over here on the left side, so just going to go ahead and put our clip in. Got a reload. 22 second reload on the general. We don't want to be extremely aggressive because once we fire all three shots, we're out of the fight for a second. Now, coming up right here, I wanted to try and bait a shot from him. You know, force him to shoot my top plate. He was starting to aim down there. All I was trying to do was prevent my Panther 2 from taking another shot. You know, so exposing myself a little bit to make him waste a round. And occasionally that can really just help distribute damage throughout the team keeping one side up and running for a while now we have got a lot of heavies down in the city you know they're they're trying to fight the best of what they can and the three mediums that we have over here and left we're just trying to mow through as much as we can to get across to go help them and do flank So checking out the map, looking at positions, like locations, areas to go, planning the next move, and it, it's like you, you make a plan at the start of the match, but usually you don't go in game too much. You, you try and, there's a couple of things to take care of. 
And one of the biggest ones would be to pay attention to your map. Your map is your best friend. You know, if you're getting rushed, finding an escape route can really help. Or planning one out before you even move in. Now, here in the A44, um, we, we kind of scruffed the shot. So, starting the reload early, we only fire two shells, but there's no point to keep that third one in and fire one and then wait 20 seconds to fire again. For how long it's going to take us to move around, we can start a reload. If you don't know how to start a reload inside of an autoloader, with default settings on the remote, it is right on the D-pad. Now, I'm pulling up just trying to see if there's any artilleries back here, because I do not want any of those arties alive. I want them all gone. Equalizers are devastating, especially since they're in a platoon. And since we're not getting any spots, I'm watching the map and I see that our heavies in the center are falling apart. They still have their four-man platoon and their two artillery platoons still up. Now, I'm trying to tell everybody, hey, we need to get out of here because a T-34 and a brick, they, they may not have the greatest hull armor, but whenever it comes down to, you know, ridge lines, they are extremely devastating haul down tanks, especially with the two artillery there. So base gapping is completely out of the equation already, since there's two artilleries and three heavy tanks and a tank destroyer. Even the VK-100, if he's coming up for a slow aggression, he, he is just going to devastate. Now, even if I was on the cap, we'd probably be down to 19 seconds about now. And right away, we see a brick. Now, remember, 19 seconds is what we would have been at. We're down to 11 seconds. I would have still been at the cap by this point. And it would have already been hit with a reset. So, throwing out a couple shots, getting a few hits. You know, you, you just want to try and get as much damage as you can immediately. I'm loading the premium now. I started loading premium as soon as I realized that I needed to fall back. Because you want every single shot to count. A little bit of sacrificing for ammunition for, you know, paying the extra amount to get those rounds through the armor. And in my opinion, it's totally worth it. Now, if those two mediums would have fall back... There would have been a lot of pressure on the middle. And honestly, I think the other team might have won. So since they stayed at cap, it did make a huge difference. Right there, able to get three shots off into the side of the T-34, making sure every single one connects. Taking the time to aim in, trying to stay calm. And at this time, I was thinking that there's still two artilleries. So I kind of just wanted to get out of my last known position as quickly as I can and pulling up to take the final and early reload because I'm not planning on pushing up to go scout my plan is to fall back I have two artilleries that are in a platoon with me and all I want to do is just get their attention let them know I'm here to spot I need cover so there's a VK100 a T28 and an equalizer still alive Right here, I'm thinking, you know, the VK, we didn't see him on left. Is he still pushing on the right side? So I wanted to come over on the right side to get some spots. Trying to make a call out saying, hey, I want to try and head back here. And artillery's like, no, last, you know. It, since they're making call outs towards the city, they probably have an idea on where the VK was and last sighted. And since they're artillery, they have a bird's view. You know, they, they see a lot of positions on the map. They could, they could have saw a tree over there fall. And so, me, first thing that comes to mind is, yes, I'm going to go check that out. Now, against that T-28 Proto, I, I'm full health, you know, I can risk a shot. So, taking him out of the game, um, T-28s have got extremely good camouflage. If he was still alive, it, it would have been devastating. Now, right here, I'm just letting our artillery know where that round came from. And... The main goal here is to go and get out the arty immediately. Because if that VK starts pulling up and spots out my arties, the equalizer with his accuracy is just going to pick them off one by one. Right here, I'm trying to just wiggle a tad bit to not get hit. I do get hit, which, you know, driving on the side of a tank, it's easier to lead a shot than it is driving away. 
equalizer misses a shot on us, so with vertical stabilizers, we put two in him. Start our early reload, trying to get some distance, staying below the hill line, making sure that I'm not going to be spotted whenever I leave. Now that I'm not spotted, uncapable of popping back up the hill and relocating, avoiding trees because you don't want him to know where you are. Early game, it's nice to knock down trees and make positions for tanks. So, making a fallback position or just somewhere you can rely on late game. So, pushing an aggressive push, suddenly you've been forced back. You just fall back about an extra 200 meters to that position you made beforehand. And suddenly, you've got camouflage all around you and it's a lot harder to spot you. Basically, you baited them towards you by that point. Now, the Czechoslovakian tanks, um, I, I like them, but at the same time, I don't like them. I, I've played a couple of them on other accounts at a couple of buddies' houses, and, you know, they're, they're decent tanks, but overall, uh, autoloaders are not really my style. I don't mind my Kronenwagen. I don't mind my T-57. The Waffle 100 I find to be just, there's not enough turret armor there to, you know, hold up with that 37-second reload, and the concealment it gets... It, it's abysmal. Now, right here, I, I spotted him out and I just wanted to hold my position because I know he can't see me because of the foliage that was in front. And now that we know where he is, both artilleries have possible shots. You know, getting a little bit aggressive because I still have 694 health. I can take two shots. So, first round, straight into the ammo rack. Holding around, aiming straight for the rear, trying to hit the engine and not wanting to bounce off the side armor. Artillery gets a hit in. He is down to under 200 hit points. He is now a one shot for me. So this play that we just had was with basically a, a losing match. And to bring it back by just movements, um, very specific locations to go to, and just trying to keep a cool head throughout the entire match. Um, once you start to panic or you try to hold a position, especially in these types of situations, it, it can really play against you. So 3,900 just rounding it off, extremely close. You know, it's like 450 to assist. The artillery near the end there, you know, they, they made the enemies panic. They prevented the enemies from going out in the open. They made them want to just come up to center. If the enemies would have gone out in the open, I have two artilleries, and the general's a pretty good scout with its base view range of over 380, so running coated optics and a, a decent crew. My crew on this is not exactly the greatest, but it, it's more built for camouflage than anything else. So, making plays... Knowing positions on maps, um, making early positions. Honestly, my early positions on this map, there wasn't really any. Um, but w whenever you know that you're going to be outnumbered trying to cap a base or take control over a base, you know, it's always best to try and fall back. You know, we had three mediums to begin with, a Panther II, a Champion, and me and the General T-27. The T-27, it's got enough speed and power to wait to handle the right side, while the Panther and the the uh, champion, Panzer 510, could have gone back to the bottom left of the map and scouted out the entire left side and preventing them from making pushes. Two separate locations, about 300 meters from one another. That way they got crossfire and kind of a pincer. And then having me on the right side, it, it just would have been a slow-paced run, but it, it would have worked out the same way. However, I find that that match worked out extremely well. And since I had reliable artillery preventing the enemies from jumping out in the open or trying to rush, it, it helped out. So, you know, to those two artillery players that I played with, thank you. You guys are fantastic if you watch my channel. And, you know, I'm sitting here and I, I looked at my channel whenever I woke up and I was like, wow, 55 subscribers. Dude, you guys, truly, you are just amazing. It, you make my day each time I get on anymore. It, it makes me want to get content out and it makes me just want to get better at doing this. I want to learn how to edit. Uh, I want to try and make an intro. I want to get to know the community. I, I know that 
getting to meet everybody on here is going to be a struggle, but hey, I'll try my best. You guys have a wonderful day. Seriously, thank you for all the support you guys have been giving me in these early days and you know, looking forward to the new year and if you heard there might be a event coming out with wheeled vehicles. Um whenever that happens, I I might throw a video out that day, just a 2 minute one, try and get some people to play with. Or on Xbox, I'll make a group post for PlayStation. We can try and use a Discord. You guys have a great day, and I will catch you on the next video.